evening and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. And on tonight's program, we're going to be talking about why some people seem to love life in the fast lane. Now, just to give you a dictionary definition of life in the fast lane, it's a way of living which is full of excitement and activity and often danger. Now, tonight I'll be joined by Dr. Michael Sinclair and also Martin and Rachel Harris from the London Parachute School. And also today is Challenge Chrissy Day, so I'll be showing you my latest challenge a bit later on. But let's first talk to Dr. Michael Sinclair. Hello. Hi, Chrissy. Nice to have you back. Thanks for having me. Can yeah. you tell the viewers what you do? For those that maybe don't recognise you, we've got some new viewers. <laughs> Indeed. I'm a consultant psychologist, a counselling psychologist, mm -hmm. and I work in, um, primarily in private practice in, in the centre of London, um, helping people with uh, some of their difficulties and stuff. Okay. Now, now how would you describe sort of person that likes to live life in the fast lane? Well, I, I think, you know, that it's becoming increasingly common for many of us these days to sort of live in the fast lane. I mean, there's certainly, you know, amazing modern world being invented around us with advancements mm -hmm. in technology, and we're constantly always on the go, constantly always sort of, uh, you know, flicking away on our Blackberries and our iPhones and stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, I think living in the fast lane has become something that we're all kind of familiar with these days. But mm -hmm. of course, there are certain ways where people may take this to an extreme, if you like, and it might be through, you know, thrill-seeking adrenaline sports, for instance. Yeah. Um, it might be about high-pressure jobs, for instance, and stuff like that. Um, it may be that people, you know, engage in, um, you know, some sort of uh, maybe unhealthy behaviours as well, such as gambling that can have potential risks and costs to yeah. their, uh, their lives in general. Now, I mean, it is sometimes quite difficult to, for example, if you have got like a very busy job and stuff like that, you do get very stressed and you, you, how, how do you normally advise people how to, how to cope with things like that? Well, you know, it's all too easy to get caught up into this fast pace of life, I think, you mm -hmm. know, so I think it's really important that we, we recognise this tendency for us to do that. I mean, we must remember that our, our brains, if you like, evolved um, in kind of, to kind of problem solve and to always do stuff and work stuff out. So we're constantly analysing and problem solving and stuff like that. So if we're unaware of this sort of natural primitive tendency within our soul, then we run yeah. the risk of exhaustion and burnout um, and a whole host of sort of you know, stress and other psychological related problems. They said you work in the city. You? Indeed, yes. Wow, so you must get a lot of people yeah. come and see <laughs> yes. you all the time. Yeah, so the majority of the clients that, that come to us, about 90%, are sort of corporate executives. So they're kind of, you know, pretty much in the fast lane most of the time, um, always striving, if you like, for kind of um, the next goal, the next achievement, working really quite long hours, I mean, 24 hours a day at times, you know, Gosh. with very little break. So, you know, it's really important for them and for many of us, as I said, with our iPhones and all sorts, to sort of take a break sometimes, um, and that might... Simply, you know, why just, don't people mm. do that though? Sometimes, do you think? Well, well, indeed, I think you know, as, as as I was saying, there's kind of a primitive element to all this, if that makes sense. We we kind of um, you know like to try and you know feel like we're achieving a lot of the time. I think, um, and I think that this is a. a a, a tendency within us. It goes back to our ancestry past where, you know, it's all about our caveman days, you know, where we wanted to survive. So we wanted a sense of, you know, um, kind of accomplishment and achievement. And we, we kind of get sort of caught into an addictive sort of uh, tendency with our, um, if you like, our, our adrenaline, if you like. So mm -hmm. we're striving all the time, raising the bar. We kind of get used to the adrenaline that we might experience. We might sort of raise the bar higher next time, going for the next bigger job or something like that, or yeah. we're looking for the next bonus. So we get caught up in it. And I think it's very kind of um, addictive in a way. Do you notice like a difference between men and women in this in this respect? Like, do you find that men are sort of more, they want to achieve more, and they they don't sort of maybe take a break, or do you think it's the same for both sexes well, now? Well, I think it is difficult to you know differentiate between genders like that, particularly with the client group I work with. I mean, there certainly are you know equally as many women as there are men, sort of you know mm. burnt out and stressed and, and very driven um, and, and quite perfectionist in their way of being as well. Yeah, so we're talking about that before. <laughs> A little bit of a perfectionist, I'm yes. trying not to be so much. So I think that's important because, you know, if we think about perfection, it's, it's sort of, you know, a way to sort of, you know, um, strive forward all the time and, and, mm. and not sort of um, experience a sense of failure within ourselves. And I think that's something that we can trace back to our ancestry past, as I mm -hmm. said. We want to feel like we're, we're surviving and we're competent. So yeah. um, I think that's why people do it. But I don't think there's definitely, a, 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 certainly a, a, different, a, a difference between males and females. Mm. Though, okay. Now let's go back to the, the fast lane thing. Now, now you, Barbara visited you uh, recently, didn't she? Can you tell us what that was about just before we played the video? Absolutely. Briefly? Well, you know, um, I think that w what we need to do is, is start to recognise that it's not just about, you know, doing less necessarily all the time. Um, you know, we can actually bring a, a great level of sort of awareness to our behaviours. And this is something that's becoming very hot in psychology these days, something called mindfulness particularly. Um, so mindfulness conjures up images of sort of meditating or stuff like that. Mm, but we don't but it's not that, is it? It's not that at all. I had no. a quick look at this video before. Let's just take a look and mm. then we can come back and talk about it. Okay. 
Living in the modern world we're living in, with computers, emails, mobile phones, lots of us in our jobs and just our social lives as well, are living in the fast lane. I know myself with my work, working on a live TV show, and generally in my life, I'm always on the go. And I've come down to City Psychology Group today to speak to Dr. Michael Sinclair, hoping he can give me some tips on how to slow down and appreciate the moment that I'm in. So hi Michael, I've come down today um, hoping that you can you can give me some assistance with my very fast paced life that I have. Because uh, working on a live TV show, I'm always busy, lots of emails, lots of guests and stuff. And um, and it's great, but sometimes I don't know when to sort of stop um, or, you know, how to slow down. And I just didn't know if you could give me some tips to help me. Have you seen one of these before? No. <laughs> this is called a Chinese finger trap. OK. And it's a really simple thing. And I just want to, with this, I want to just illustrate to you what I'm talking about, what this is all about. So if I could just give that to you for a sec. And all I ask you to do is stick your fingers in both ends and don't do anything else with that, that's it. And now, I just want to give you a simple instruction, which is to take your fingers out. And what happens? They get stuck. You get stuck, mm -hmm. you're trapped, yeah. yeah. So, you know, what this does is highlight to us how it is that if we act habitually, without mm -hmm. any awareness, instinctively, we often get ourselves into more trouble. And now all I encourage you to do, Barbara, is bring your attention yeah. to your feet. Just hold your feet in awareness. Okay. Just notice your feet. You may be able to notice the sensation at the soles of your feet, where your feet meet the surface of the floor. Mm -hmm. If you can or you can't, it's absolutely fine. Just be open to what you can notice. The absence or the presence of sensation is fine. There they are, your feet. And then there's you noticing your feet. How was all that? That was good, yeah. Um, I think um, it's good just to stop and sort of like note it, think about your feet and your body and the air because we do just um, not think about these things which are with us the whole day, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, Barbara, tell me, have you got a mobile phone? Yep, I do. Yeah, where's your phone right now? It's in my handbag, okay. waiting for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do, you, do you feel an urge to sort of check your phone now and again? I mean, maybe even while we've been sitting here today. Yeah, I did check it a bit you earlier <laughs> on the quiet. <laughs> and um, I regularly check my phone. Um, everyone who knows me knows that my phone is never far away. As it is for most of us these days, isn't it? It's kind of an extension of our bodies, I think. Can I just yeah. say, well done you. Congratulate yourself for staying with me in this exercise without checking your phone. It just went off, actually. There it goes again. <laughs> but can you see the impulse to check all the time? And mm -hmm. of course, if we did that, that, if you would have done that more often than you did here today, it would have taken you away from the experience that we're having. Yeah. So if we're talking about rushing from one place to another, whether we're sort of running or walking fast, many of us do these days, you know, we can bring mindfulness awareness to our walking as well. So I reckon let's go outside and let's do that now. And now what I want to do is bring that awareness as we continue to walk. So just noticing the impulse to move step by step, raising one leg after the other. The quality of each step. Be curious, are you walking softly? Are you walking hard? See if you can notice the sensation of air as you propel forward against your skin. So, Barbara, how did you find that mindfulness walking exercise? Um, I found it um, interesting because I wouldn't normally do that walking. It's different from doing it inside the consultation rooms, doing it on the street. And there was um, there was an ambulance siren going off, or a police siren, whatever, and, and I did get distracted by that because it was so loud. But then I did pull myself back into focusing on the on the walking, just to, just to be aware of the walking, so. That's brilliant, that's what mindfulness is about, is noticing where our attention is and placing it where we want it to be. So distraction isn't a sign of failure, it's inevitable, we get distracted. But when you notice you're distracted, you can just bring it back to where you want it to be. That's mindfulness. So, to round up what I've learned today. Number one, when you're living in the fast lane, your natural reaction to a problematic situation may not be the best. Instinctively, we often get ourselves into more trouble. Number two, take time out to be more aware of your body and the air around you. And relax, just be, don't always think. Number three, when you walk down the street, don't just be a robot on autopilot, be you and be awake. It's simple, less thinking, less doing, 
and more being. Sorry, <laughs> you caught me. Someone spoke really loudly in my ear just now and it really hurt and you caught me. Never mind. Okay, so we're just going to go to a quick break very, very shortly. So tell us very briefly in about 30 seconds sure. what that was about. Well, you know, what we do these days is we're more aligned with the term human doing than human being. I mean, yeah. we're actually human beings, aren't we? Of that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But the way we conduct ourselves is like we should be called human uh, doing. So we yeah. need to lose, not lose <laughs> touch with who's doing all this doing. And yeah. that place within us, that place of awareness, if you like, that we mm -hmm. saw there, is a place where we can find peace and stability and we can de-stress, for instance. We need to sort of find a, a place where we can stand amidst this kind of frantic world in which yeah. we're living. And that's what mindfulness offers us. That is really interesting though, because I never really thought about it like that, because you do kind of just go through life worried about lots of things and thinking about lots of things and not actually enjoying certain moments or but, just being aware of, of certain moments. Well, absolutely. I mean, for many of us, before we even sort of open our eyes and certainly before we even put our feet on the floor in the morning, our mind is racing with all yeah, the things that we've got to do me. that day all the people we've got to see, how we're going to get through the day and so forth. And then when we get to the shower as well, often, you know, we're in there physically on our own, but it's often that we're mentally in there with other people. You mm -hmm. know, even that really annoying person at work, for instance, we're sort of going over old ground with them, trying to work out how we're going to approach them today. So yeah. if we think about it with all that doing in our mind, all that thinking, we're actually taking ourselves away from a really pleasant, potentially pleasant experience, like actually enjoying our shower. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's important to step back from all this noise in our mind and all this doing that we're doing. All right. Well, we're going to have a couple on after the break and you're going to kind of not analyse them, but you're just going to give us maybe some some hints and tips and yeah you're going to kind of analyze them a little bit. We'll see how <laughs> so, yeah so join us after this and we're going to tell you more don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on YouTube Facebook and Twitter